wait to worshipers. I know you've heard me talk about how I got into podcasting and how I use Anchor. But if you haven't heard it, I just can't stop bragging. So let me explain for you a little bit about the easiest way to make a podcast. If you have not heard, it's through Anchor. Anchor, man, it's free. Did y'all hear that? It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone. Um, Sometimes I use my computer, but for the most part, I do it right from my phone. Also, uh, sometimes we're in the studio, so you never know. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, many, many more. So um, it's a great gig. Also, you can get paid from your podcast with no minimum listenership it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place so listen just so you can uh be a part of what's going on in the podcast industry now download the free anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started and you can also check out wait to worship right there as well we look forward to hearing you your name oh God and we give you glory God and we ask you to cover worship today oh God and allow your anointing to flow today God let us not be looking at our clocks oh God but do what you will God do what you will today God we don't have you on a time frame oh God your anointing can flow how it wants today God we give you liberty oh God to do what you will God in the name of Jesus oh God we don't want to leave here the same way we came God in the name of Jesus oh God I find tradition oh God I find religion oh God from moving today oh God in the name of Jesus oh God I find every religious spirit oh God do what you will today God in the name of Jesus oh God hallelujah Lord hallelujah Lord, it obey your God. Oh Jesus. Mm. Oh Jesus, it obey. Even as the word is going forth, oh God, we break a fallow ground, oh God, that the word will take root, oh God, the word will take root in hearts, oh God, that the word will take root in minds, oh God, God, that yokes be broken, oh God, off of the rhema word, oh God, hallelujah, God, that revelation will take place, oh God, God, that your people, oh God, will receive the word, oh God. God. Hallelujah, God. I find the adversary, oh God, from plucking up the seed, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that our hearts, oh God, will be receptive, oh God. In our Messiah, God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Let your word, oh God, hallelujah, take root in us today, oh God, that we will not just be hearers of the word, oh God, but that we will be doing of the word, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We will not have a form of godliness, oh God, but deny the power thereof, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Clap your hands, saints. Hallelujah, Lord. Clap your hands, all ye people. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. And we bless your name, O God. And we give you glory, Father. And we love you, Jesus. Amen. So if you would do that, um, I believe the Lord wants to speak to us this morning. Uh, through his word i want you to get real quickly into john chapter 8 i'm going to share with you what i believe the holy spirit is speaking in this season and our 
theme for today is I am. This is going to be our I am series. And then to subtitle that, it is discovering the me in the we. Discovering the me. Discovering yourself in Christ. That we're nothing without him. Somebody's already getting it. I don't know where this is going to go before it's done, but I can I can see it being radical. Just look to somebody on your right and tell them, there's no me without we. Some of y'all a little soft this morning. You, you're a little, little timid, but turn to the other person in the back somewhere close by and tell them, there's no me without we. In other words, you're nothing without him. The word of God says in him I live, I move, and I have my being. Do you know, and I'm not even on the notes right now, that every breath that you take is from him? You exist because he exists. And I want you to know this morning, I want you to hop down. If you're in John 8, uh, hop down to that. I'm going to uh, zero in on verse 58. Just go right there. Um, if you're there, and just shout amen. It says, verily, verily, I tell you, Jesus answered before Abraham was born, I am. And at this, they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. I want you to know today that God is releasing, make sure you have something you can write on and take notes on. God is releasing a new covenant through Jesus Christ. And you see it in Matthew chapter nine, verse 17. It was the intent of the Messiah to not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. He said, I've come not to destroy the law, but to in me that it shall be fulfilled. And in Matthew chapter nine, verse 17, he says, how can we take new wine and put it into old bottles? For if you put the new wine in the old bottle, uh, the bottles will burst. And he uses the uh, illustration of two parables in that text. He's talking also about putting a uh, new fabric on an old fabric and then also putting new wine into an old bottle. In other words, if you put the new wine in the old bottle, when it goes through the fermentation process uh, and begins to break down, the chemicals uh, will cause the old bottle to burst. Uh, it cannot contain the new wine. And so our moral moral this morning and message is that when God is, is doing something new in you, when you accepted Jesus Christ and it said if eating uh behold, if any man be in Christ, first Corinthians chapter five, uh if any man be in Christ, what well, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away, and be, behold, all things have become new. Uh and, and you're still a work in progress. Uh, I don't want to talk to Christians that have arrived, that, that have made, that that have quit, uh, that are so holy uh, that uh, they don't need uh, to be prayed for anymore. I don't want to talk to those believers. I'm trying not to preach too too quick up in here, but I I don't want to talk to the to the folks that have fasted for so long that uh, that they're they're no good that you can't really have a relationship with them because they're walking around like the Pharisees with their head in the air and uh, they're looking holy but they really don't have a relationship with God and he's he's talking about a new covenant he's talking about stripping off the old attitudes that we carry sometime and. Uh, the old habits that we have. He he's looking in your life this morning. If you're here, you're you're not by accident this morning. God wants to strip away that uncrucified flesh. He wants to remove all of the things that are not like Him. He wants to put the new wine into a a new bottle. I'm trying not to preach too quick this morning. I'm hoping that you get it. Somebody just scream back at me this morning. New wine, new wine, 
new wine. And so he's having a discussion uh, with uh, the Pharisees and it, it gets quite heated in this particular text because he's trying to get them to understand that he is the new wine. Uh, I don't want to have some church this morning. I'm going to look over here and see if there's somebody with me. I said he is the new wine. Hallelujah. And so he's trying to get them to understand uh, through his teaching uh, that he has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He says here, y'all stay here. Come on, somebody say stay here. Okay, so he says here in John 8 and 30 uh, through 58, Jesus is trying to, to pour in the new wine. And this chapter begins with uh, the woman who has been caught in the middle of adultery. And uh, Jesus is teaching, and and as he is teaching, he is uh, all of a sudden uh, they the Pharisees bring this woman and and throw her right in the front of him to let Jesus know that she has been uh, caught in the midst of adultery. And they said that Moses and the law have commanded us that such a woman should be stoned. But what do you say? And this they said to him, but Jesus, he stooped down, he wrote in the ground as though he didn't even hear them. And so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone and check it out. And again, then Jesus, he stoops down again and he begins to write in the dirt again. And the Bible records that uh, from the oldest to the youngest, they begin to, to stand up and walk away and leave this woman. Uh, I believe if we can add a little bit more into this text without uh, doing a disservice or a disjustice, uh, that uh, she was caught in the act and that the people around town really knew who she was. Uh, this really was an open and shut case. Uh, there, it should have been a stoning. But Jesus took this woman while she was down on the ground. They threw her down on the ground and he takes her by the hand and he, he pulls her up. Isn't it something that when the world throws you down and you've been caught in the act that God will take you by the hand when you are at your lowest point and pull you up? When, when everybody else may throw you away and you've been caught in the act. Come on, is there any folks in here who understand being caught right in the act? And God grabs you by the hand and he pulls you up. I believe that there's some folks here this morning that have been caught in the act just like this woman, but God grabs them by the hand because of the love of Christ and he pulls you up out of your muck and mire and he says, come on. Unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And God is pulling the church up right now. He told me, he said, this is a picture of the church. And, and we have forgotten uh, that we were thrown to the ground. Uh, he, we have forgotten that we have been uh, assaulted by the enemy, but God is reaching down in this new season and he's, he's pulling us up and he's causing us uh, to receive the new wine. Is there anybody here who knows what I'm talking about? In other words, I'm going to make it real simple for all the church folk in here. Even though you've been caught in the act, some of us are ex-crackheads, some of us are ex-adulterers, some of us are ex-sinners, uh, but he reached down and grabbed us and he picked us up. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. And so all of the Pharisees turned and they walked away. And they saw the woman there, but they, they couldn't do anything. And if, if I was able to just imagine for a minute, I believe that when Jesus stooped down and began to write in the ground, I believe he was writing their names. I believe that he was writing dates. You're saying, Pastor, you, you're putting too much into the text. But I believe the Bible says that he knows all things. Is there anybody here? And I believe he was saying, look, I know that the old law would have stoned her. 
I know that the Old Testament says to stone her uh, in Leviticus and then also in Deuteronomy 22, but I want you to know right now that I'm going to have mercy on her. I'm going to have grace on her. And so sometimes when you're coming out of your past uh, and you're trying to let go of the things that used to be, God is trying to help you to understand when you're at your low point, he's going to reach down wherever you're at and he's going to pick you up from your low point. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here who feels like you, you, don't, you don't have any further or any lower to go, but God is working on your situation and you just want to praise him right now. You just want to you wanna shout hallelujah. Cause... Hallelujah. 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 And so then Jesus... He said, I am. But verse 37 requires our attention because he says to the Pharisees in the, the exchange after they uh, later find him again, he has slipped through the crowd and uh, they're back again picking up this conversation in verse 37. And he says, because uh, he says, I know you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me. He said, you seek to kill me. He says, because my word has no place in you. And they were physical descendants of Abraham, but they were not his spiritual descendants. Make sure you get that in your notes. They were physical descendants of Abraham, but they were not his spiritual descendants. Unless they had faith in Jesus Christ and believed that he was the Messiah. And instead of trusting Jesus Christ to forgive their sins, they wanted to kill him. And they heard the word, but they didn't believe it. So they couldn't really accept the new wine. He said, because my word, I want you to get that in your notes this morning, because my word has no place in you. Second Timothy 3.16, write this in your notes. It says, all scripture is given. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. So when we see that word, I want you to write the word inspiration down this morning. This word here laid out is an excellent form in the Greek devotional by Renner's Greek, and it comes from the Greek word theonustos. I want you to write theonustos down, T-H-E-O-N-E-U-S-T-O-S. Theonustos. It's a compound word of the word theo and pneuma. The Greek word theos is the word for God, T-H-E-O-S. It's the word for God. However, the real power here is in the word pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A. It comes from the Greek word, root word, new, P-H-N-E-U, new. Is it okay if we teach a little bit this morning? The root word new communicates the idea of this dynamic air flowing, air moving. For instance, it can mean to blow as to blow air or to blow air through an instrument. So if you've ever seen a trumpet player or a flutist playing, uh, they put the lips on the mouthpiece uh, and they began to blow through the instrument. It has that same idea or same illustration. It's also in other places, it's translated as breath to emit or to give off a fragrance, to give off a fragrance. Finally, the root word can be used to denote the projection of emotions, such as anger or love or courage. But when the root word nu, P-H-N-U, becomes pneuma, as in this particular verse, it carries a more profound range of meaning, including life force. 
energy or power. And the Jews considered the Numa to be the powerful force of God that created the universe and all living things. Somebody just hollered back at me this morning, Numa. The force that continues to sustain creation. Not only did God create creation with his word, but he sustains it by his word. So when he says in the beginning, God create, created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved and it hoovered upon the face of the waters. God is saying that not only did he say, let there be light, uh, but because of his words and his Holy Spirit moving with his words, everything that was supposed to be in the dimension of light was caused. In other words, something that was uncaused now causes something to happen. Something that was invisible causes something to be visible. It is the power, the energy of uh, the pneuma that God is talking about here. And so then when we have the word pneuma, which is compounded together with the word theos, it forms the word theonustos. Theonustos, which is where we get the word inspiration. The words together literally mean God breathed. God breathed. It's a picture of God breathing into his word. Don't miss this. Don't come just for the shout today. Don't come just for the hallelujah today. It's a picture of God breathing his word into existence, using the prophets, using uh, the gospel writers to breathe into them as instruments. Are you getting it this morning? Uh, to breathe into them uh, the word of God. So he says in John 1, in the beginning was the word, and the, the word was with God, uh, and the word uh, became flesh, and it dwelt amongst us, and we beheld the glory of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. In other words, when God breathes onto something, it just doesn't stay air. It takes on form. It, it is anybody hearing what I'm saying? It, it begins to take on shape. It begins to take on a manifestation of its own. And so God says that his word is God breathed and it's, 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 has its own power to sustain. So let me give you a very simple illustration of what I mean this morning. And I know it might be a little rudimentary for some of the some of the smart folk in here, but I want to take something so so complex and, and make it simple. And I've got this balloon this morning, and I'm going to begin to blow into this balloon as God blew his word into existence and God blows his purpose into you. Is that okay? Do I have any any people that want to learn this morning? If, if you're here with me, just wave your hand in the atmosphere. This is God blowing into you. Come on up here, wife. Come on. She's going to help me this morning. Somebody say, God's been, he's been breathing into me. Come on. Somebody. He's breathing into you even right now as you're receiving the word. Watch this. I got all the kids is watching me. I, 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 wish, I wish some of the adults was, was locked in right now. Somebody say, I'm God breathed. Now she's going to tie a knot on the bottom of this, which means that, watch this, I'm done with sin. The Holy Ghost just gave that to me. It ain't even in the notes. I'm done with sin. I wanna. I want the word and the Holy Ghost just to lock in now. I, I want to live for Him, and He. And see, you know something. She's so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, wife. And this is. You can't see the air in here. You can't. Uh, you can't really even touch it, but it's just like a, the Holy Ghost working on the inside of you. And if you were to get some scientists to come and to look at this 
uh, and to analyze it, to see what's on the inside. He would say, well, uh, that man right there, his, his molecules are in there and his DNA, Brother Rob, is inside of the balloon. Somebody's going to come with me this morning. His likeness is inside of the balloon. Everything that's in the Father was in the Son. And everything that's in the Son, because he said, I can do all So what's inside of you, uh, that's why the Bible says, uh, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly uh, uh, through the power of God that works in you. It's a, it's a power uh, that's working inside of you. It's the, it's somebody just holler back at me, it's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost working inside of you. And so, so when Jesus is telling uh, the Pharisees, he said, my word is not in you. See, a lot of us are thinking uh, like the Pharisees that, that he's talking about the word and being intellectual and memorizing the word. And that's important uh, because the Bible says study to show ourselves approved. A workman unto God that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, but I want to push you a little bit further this morning, and I want to say that his word is also his power. Ooh, Lord, help us this morning. Hallelujah. See, a lot of people want to come to church uh, and they want to get an intellectual sermon and that's okay. Uh, but I want you to push it a little bit further this morning and say, I need some power too. I need the wind of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I don't want to be like the Pharisees uh, and look holy and know the word and intellectualize the word and not be able to move mountains. Uh, speak to the mountain and have the mountain be cast into the, is there anybody here who wants the pneuma power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's ready to breathe in you. Hallelujah. And God does everything by his word. See, see, we can't get caught on not learning God's word. Uh, uh, that's why uh, the psalmist said it like this. Uh, it was good, Brother Wayne, that I be afflicted, uh, that I might learn your statutes. Uh, in other words, sometimes when we're going through, we want to give credit sometimes to the devil. Uh, but sometimes it's God taking us through the fire. It's God taking us through the test uh, to get us his word, uh, to teach us his laws, uh, to teach us his statutes. Uh, is there anybody here who will come and say, you know what? I want to submit to the word of God. I I want to learn his ways because uh, his ways are not my ways and his thoughts are not my thoughts. Uh. And I don't want to intellectualize the glory this morning. Uh, I don't want to be too smart uh, that I miss the wind. Uh, I don't want to be too intellectual uh, that I forget about his anointing uh, and his power. Is there anybody here who want to holler in the atmosphere with that God breathed in you uh, and shout glory? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was telling the, the Pharisees, uh, you, because the Pharisees would walk around with the phylacteries. They had the word twisted around uh, their brows and, and the miters. They would wear the word all over them. They had these long robes uh, and these long gowns, uh, and they looked holy. They wanted to appear holy to the people. Hallelujah. They wanted to look righteous to the people. But I believe that there's two people in this place this morning that are saying, you know what, God? I don't want to just look holy. I don't want to just look church like I, I need some wind. I, I need some pneuma. I want devils to be casted out. I, I want the gifts to be happening. I want blinded eyes to open. I want stage four cancer to be moved off of bodies. Who do men say that I am? Thou art the Christ, uh, the son of the living God. Somebody holler in here. Hallelujah. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Ooh, Jesus, I'm feeling it push on me this morning. 
I'm tired of going to church uh, and people stay crippled. I'm tired of going to church uh, and people walk out worse than when they came in. I'm tired of going to church uh, and white people don't love black people and black people don't love white people. We need a change. Uh, we, ne we need the pneuma of the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm feeling it. Y'all better come on with me this morning. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody say, tell your name, I'm in the right place at the right time. <laughs> I don't want to be like the Pharisees. I don't, I don't want to be super religious. I, and we want education and we want degrees and we, we want to increase in God, but we want power too. We don't want to be dry bones. Uh -huh. We don't want to be looking holy. We don't want to be like the Pharisees, men in whitewashed tombs. Uh. And so he's told them, uh, I've got new wine for you. I've got... I want to take you into your purpose. I want to take you in what I have for you this morning. Now, now don't, don't trust just your, your education. Don't just trust your, your pedigree and your background. Uh, don't trust just what you know. Come on, somebody. It's time to move out. I feel the Holy Ghost just pushing on me. It's time, Brother Rob, to move out to the unknown. It's time to move out to the place uh, that's uncharted right now. Hallelujah. I know you got your blueprints together. I know you got your plan together. I know you got it uh, uh, marked meticulously from plan A to plan Z. But God said, I'm doing a new thing right now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then he picks up in verse 53. The story gets better and I got to get ready to get out of here. Because y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm trying to have a good time this morning. I said, we trying to have a good time this morning. So in verse 53, he says, he says it like this. He says, uh, you are, you are of your father, the devil. Oh, wow. He just, he's just letting them have it. He is mother. He's letting them have it. You are of your father, the devil and the desires of your father. You want to do. And then he says, then they said to him, are you greater than our father, Abraham, who is dead? Are you greater than the prophets who are dead? Who do you make? Who do you make yourself out to be? Who do you make yourself out to be? And Jesus answers them and he says, it is my father who honors me. Whom you say he is your God. But you shall have not known him, but I know him. If I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. <laughs> but I do know him. Somebody just, just help me. I'm, I'm trying to get this thing out to you. Somebody just say, I know him, I know him, I know him, I know him. He said, I do know him and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and it was, he was glad. It was glad. And then he, then the Jews said to him, you are not even 50 years old, man. You've seen Abraham. <laughs> and Jesus said to them, most assuredly, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up the stones and they, they wanted to throw it at him. But the Bible says he ran, he went through the crowd and he was hid in the crowd. Jesus was not just claiming to have lived before Abraham. He was claiming eternal existence. This is for all the people you witness to that don't believe that Jesus is God. To the Muslim. To to the Jehovah's Witnesses, you show him this. He's claiming to be God. He says before Abraham was. Don't miss it, y'all. Don't make me work this hard. Don't, don't make me work it too hard this morning. He, before Abraham was, I am. It, it's the same I am that we see in Exodus 3 and 14. When he says, 
what is the meaning of I am? And, and, and Moses has, has been uh, being a shepherd for 40 years, uh, passed away. He's been a shepherd for 40 years. And then all of a sudden, the Bible records uh, that he has uh, uh, heard some, something say, Moses, Moses. And he, he turns to look, the Bible says, and, and there's a bush over to the side of him. And the bush, uh, Laura, is, is burning. And, and Moses uh, goes over to see what's going on in the bush. And, and the, bush, the bush begins to speak again, Moses, Moses. And, and Moses says, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Somebody just say, here I am, Lord. You, you're, you're right here in this building, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying that, that you're coming to the Lord in a special way now. You're submitting to him in a special place because in the Hebrew, what that means is Moses was telling God, uh, I I'm here and I'll do whatever you want me to do. I know I've been running God. I, I ran from Egypt because I killed that man. That, that, that slave, but I'm here now, God. I've been running for 40 years. Any, if I could preach that. I wish I just had two people that would come. Anybody in this place, you've been running, but but now you're you're right here. And you just want to tell the Lord, I, I'm here. I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do, God. I'll go wherever you want me to go. So he, he, he the Lord tells him, he says, uh, take your shoes off, Moses. You're on holy ground. And the bush continues to burn and, and Moses doesn't understand why the bush is burning, but it's not consumed. And he he bows down. Uh, uh, he 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 lowers himself and he and the Lord begins to tell him, he says, I've heard the affliction and the cry of your people. I need you to go down to, to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses gives him a list of excuses. Well, well, God, I, uh, I can't go because the elders won't accept me. Uh, I'm, I'm not cute enough, God. I'm not the right color, God. I'm not the right height, God. Moses started saying, I'm, I, I don't speak well. I'm a stutterer, God. God told him, I'm going to get your brother Aaron. He's going to be in your stead. And Moses began to say, well, Lord, I can't do this. God says, throw the staff down. The staff turns into a snake. Pick it up at the tail. He picks it up. It turns back to a staff. God begins to show him his power. And after he convinces Moses on this one-on-one -on -one interview, he convinces him that he's, he's the man and that God is going to be with him. Moses says, he turns back to the bush and he says, well, who shall I say uh, has sent me? Who are you? The bush speaks and says, I am that I am. And some break that down in the Hebrew to say, I will be who I will be. In other words, up to this point in scripture, we had known God as El. El Shaddai, El Elyon. Uh, we knew him by a title, but now God is introducing himself in a personal context. Like, I want to know my people personally now. I want to bring them into relationship. Moses, I need you to go down there and bring them into relationship with me. I want to know who uh, they are and I want them to know who I am. I am that I am. I don't want them just to have a title. I want them to know that it's personal now. I will be who I will be. And God told me to tell you, write this in your notes this morning. It's going to bless somebody. God told me to tell you that he's got a, a patent on you. He's got a patent on you. Well, what is a patent, Pastor? Patent is an official right to be the only person or company allowed to make or sell a new product for a certain period of time. I'll say it again. It is an official right to be the only person or company to be allowed to make or sell a new product for a certain period of time. And what the Holy Ghost is saying to you this morning is that your purpose has a patent on it. It, it cannot be sold without God's approval. It cannot be given away 
You are God's property. I feel like getting up out of this seat and jumping. There is something inside of you that you have been created to do. I, I got I to gotta make sure you get it this, this morning. But somebody just put your hand on your chest this morning and say, I'm God's property. And th that means, uh, Sister Amber, that there's something inside of you. And that's why you've been through what you've been through. That's why you went through the hell you went through. That's why you had to take the bullets that you took. That's why you had to go through the negative experiences because God was shaping you. He, oh, is there anybody here who's hearing what I'm saying? Uh, God is just getting you ready uh, to put you out there to form your purpose, uh, to birth you out. I don't believe that eyes have seen uh, and ears have heard. Uh, you don't even understand what I'm saying this morning. Uh, I'm trying to pour the new wine, uh, but there's old bottles in here. God, break the old bottle off of us. Uh, how we used to see things, God. Help people to understand, God, that you're pouring out a new thing right now. Uh, you are who you will be. Uh, I am that I am. Uh, and we bless you, God. You'll never leave us or forsake us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his name this morning. He's got a patent on you. And you're in production right now. And what that means is that it's hard right now. It's difficult right now. But stick with it. Don't because he ain't going to leave you and you're not going to leave him. There's something that you're called to do uh, that nobody else can do. And I'm going to decree this morning in this place uh, that the new wine is coming and being released this morning. I'm going to decree in this place uh, that there are some authors in here. I'm going to decree in this place uh, that there are some business owners in here. I'm going to decree in here that God is releasing millionaires in here. I am decreeing this morning uh, that some people are healed this morning. Uh, I'm decreeing uh, that it's a new thing uh, because I am uh, that I am. Uh, See, let me help you for all you people who are intellectualizing this. When Moses was sent down to Egypt, he was sent down. He was dealing with all of the Egyptian gods. All of these were gods. When he dealt with the Nile River, that was the god of the Nile. Every plague that they sent, that God sent, was to deal with their high places. It was to pull them down. And Moses had an assignment to go in there and pull every principality down. And when God gets ready to send you, he'll send a deliverer. He'll send a spirit to go with you. He'll send an angel to go with you to make sure everywhere the heels of your feet touch, uh, you conquer it. Uh, who am I preaching to this morning? Uh, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in here. You got a patent on your life. Uh, the Holy Ghost is calling uh, for you to be redeemed right now. Uh, stop making excuses. Uh, cry out to God. This is the day uh, that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. There's something you're supposed to do that nobody else can do. Somebody just holler out in the atmosphere. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. Come on, give God a big hand praise in this place. I'm getting ready to close. Watch this. He told me, he told me to tell you this this morning. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Well, how, how did she get that new car? How did, how did they do that at they church? Uh, how did, how did, what, what was that he preached? Uh, stop, somebody say, stop comparing yourself. Stop comparing yourself. You got to get it in your spirit. Let me pour the wine into you. Stop, stop looking and, and measuring what other folks is doing. How did they get that money? How did they buy that house? Uh, how did they go to that school? Uh, stop comparing yourself to other people because uh, what God is getting ready to do in you. Oh, I wish somebody in the back just got that. I'm going to say it again. I'm, I'm trying to keep my seat huh, so the people on the internet can hear me, hear me. I said what God is getting ready to do in you. Can't nobody else do. You better hear what I'm preaching today. Huh? Get up out of your feelings this morning. Get up out of your depression. Huh? You are Christ's son. Huh? Hallelujah. I believe the power of the Holy Ghost uh, will cause everything dead. Uh, get up and live, daughter. Get up and live, son. Hallelujah. 
somebody just scream in the atmosphere. That's my assignment. That's my assignment. Ain't nobody else going to do it. Nobody else is going to do it. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. We lose too much time on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Well, what's so-and-so doing? Well, how they doing that? Oh, what's this going on? And what is that? Uh, stop worrying about all of that. Stop comparing yourself. You are unique. Uh, that's why your fingerprint can't be duplicated. Your thumbprint can't be duplicated. Your voice can't be duplicated. God has fearfully and wonderfully made you. I uh, feel uh, the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you are unique and God has a pattern. It's time your purpose is here. For some of you all, not everybody, but some of you all are working jobs and God is saying, I'm launching you out. I'm launching you out. It's time to come off the job. If you hear the Holy Ghost right now. It's time to come off the job. I'm doing this right now. It's time to build your business. Uh, it's time to go full-time evangelism. Uh, you hear the Holy Ghost uh, and you've been stared. Uh, you've been locked in fear. Somebody say, it's time to jump right now. I wish I could get up out of my seat. Somebody shout, it's time to jump. Uh, it's time to get off the ledge. Uh, it's time to stop moving in fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. That's enough. I I I'll pick it up next week. I gotta stop. Because if, if I give you any more, some of you all, it, the wine, it'll, 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 the bottle will break. Every preacher, the pastor grapples with this. Can I give him this? Can I give him that? No, no, you better stop right there because I don't want the bottles to break. The bottle breaks. Don't miss this. Watch this. If the bottle breaks, there's no covering. There's no covering. So God's got to take us through phases and build us up with the word of God to make sure that he rebuilds. Feel the power of the Holy Ghost. God says in this last hour, and I'm done. He said, he said, if you want to find my purpose and I land here, he said, he said, he said, have the fear of the Lord on you now. See, this is the part where we, we, we put the line in the sand. Hear me on the internet right now. Hear me all over the radio. He, he, he's, he's, he's calling for the fear of the Lord, the holiness of God, because everybody wants his stuff, but they don't want a relationship with him. Hear what the man of God is saying. He wants the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? It's the terror of the Lord. It's knowing that if I stand before a holy God, he'll look me in the face with fire. He'll ask me, what did you do with what I gave you? It's the holy fire of the Lord. Stop playing church. I'm sick of church politics. I want the fear of the Lord. I want the fire of the Lord. I want to hear him say, well done. Thank Anybody know what I'm talking about? I don't want his blessings without the person. Stop naming and claiming. He says, I'll sanctify you through and through sanctify you that's that's the fire of the lord he just drops it he keeps dropping it on and we throw that term around but i'm holy i want to be i want to live a holy life i i, I want to live a holy life but see let me the holy ghost told me to tell you this morning he says when my when my holy spirit is on you he said when my holy spirit is on you, you ain't nobody got to come and tell you to put that down okay i'm gonna preach by myself this morning ain't nobody got to tell you to, to to turn that off the tv Okay, help me, help me, Holy Ghost. Ain't nobody got to tell you, don't go over there. Don't say this, because it's the, it's the terror of the Lord. See, it, it's hard for you to understand. People don't understand. See, when you get in God's presence, there's, there's, it's not just, oh, God's my best friend. He's my buddy. And we sing all these songs. And God told Abraham, you are a friend of God. Yes, that's true. But there's another side. Tell your neighbor there's another side. There's another side. 
playing with me this morning. There's another side. It's the war of God. It's the wrath of God. It's the judgment of God. And God doesn't want to release it on his sons and daughters. You listen to what I'm saying. Here, open your spirit up. The terror of the Lord. It's the fear of the Lord. The Bible says it's the beginning of wisdom. You will get everything you ask for. But you better know that you know that you know that you're holy. That Sit it down. Put it down. Sit down. It's time to sanctify. It's time to sanctify. It's time to be holy. I don't want to just look like it. I want to be. I want to be like it. I'm, I'm getting ready to get finished, right? But I want to call all those up who want the who want the fear of the Lord on your life. I, I didn't. I didn't say look like church. I said I said the fear of the Lord on your life. I, I want to call you right now because it's the beginning of you walking into purpose. God will never pour the new wine into something that's not holy. He said it like this: If my people who are called by my name, they would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn away from their sins, turn away he said then will I hear I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins holy holy is the Lord God holy and I want to look like him I pray for the fire of the Holy Ghost on you father as we close We open our hearts once more again to you. And we say yes to the fear of the Lord. Yes, God. Don't let us be like the Pharisees. We don't want to pretend. Isn't it amazing that you don't hear this type of preaching anymore? don't hear about the fear of the Lord anymore. You don't hear about people getting into God's presence anymore. Everything is seeker friendly. But I'm, I'm telling you about the fear of the Lord. I'm telling you how to get ready to stand before the throne where the angels cry out. He told me to tell you this morning that the angels, all they do is cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of his glory. They cry it out why do you think they cry it out because huh? they don't have any other thing huh, to describe him by there are no other words huh? they can't comprehend huh? so they just cry out Isaac holy 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 is the Lord God of hosts if we're going to stand before him we need his holiness so Father come now come now Every demonic force that would begin to steal the purposes of men and women of God, we bind it now. Because you said, whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in the heavens. Whatsoever we loose on the earth shall be loosed in the heavens. And I thank you now. And everyone here thanks you now. And everyone all over in their seats thanks you now for the fear of the Lord. We don't want your hand without your heart. I said, we don't want your hand without your heart. Come on, birth it out real quick. We don't want your hand without your heart. Hallelujah. God, thank you right now. You are I am that I am. Uh, show us the fire. Show us the consuming fire. Show us your presence. Uh, show us purpose. Uh, God, we bless you before we go back to our seats. We thank you, God. We extol you. We lift your name up. And Jesus Christ, for there is no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved except the name of Jesus. Somebody help me call his name. Somebody shout his name. All of heaven shouts his name. Jesus. Jesus. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Jesus. 
Jesus, 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 Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus. Not church, relationship. And we bless you now. Say this after me before you go back to your seat. Now, Father God, I receive your son Jesus and I receive now the fear of the Lord just receive it now don't don't rush it because we can't even we try to intellectualize it you only know it through the spirit God is showing you God is showing some of you all right now what that means Hallelujah. Angels bow down, but men won't. Seraphims bow down, but men won't. Archangels Gabriel and Michael bow down, but men won't. The 20 and 4 elders bow down, but men won't bow down to God. I'm trying to take my seat. How can the, the created not bow down to the created? Oh, pray for me, wife. Pray for me. Pray for me. God, the one who gave you breath, limbs, eyes. And we look back at God like he's, he's the created. He said in his word, I am God and I'm God alone. Say this, and I receive Jesus Christ now. And the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Make me holy. Just like you. I want to be like you. Don't let me be religious. Let my gift now make room and bring me before great men. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, I, I open the windows of heaven so that your children now receive their gifts from you. They were stagnant before, broke, disgusted, depressed. God, now the windows of heaven are open now. And you said, I will pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Pour out on them right now. Pour out of your presence. Pour out your gifts. Pour out a double portion. Pour. Hallelujah. Pour. And we receive now. Because you are the man. And we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Give it one last hand praise with your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, take your, take your seat right now. Come on. I'm going to bring my wife up and let her present to the children. And as I, as I get out of her way and out of your way, I want you to remember that Lady Esther and I appreciate everything that you guys do for this ministry. We are because of you. I'll say it again. We are because of you. Over the internet, we are because of you. And so I want to say to you that uh, we appreciate all of your giving and all of your generosity and standing with this ministry. And many of you all, let me just say this. Um, um, you can see God is doing a lot of great things around the building, but more importantly around the community. So I just want to say thank you. They were out there even banging on the roof this morning. I didn't know they were going to be out there. But God is blessing. And so we're able to do what we do because of you. And so we want to say thank you on behalf of Esther and I and, and the leadership and the board. We thank you. I hope you can look me in the eyes because I want to look you in the eye and tell you thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. We don't take it for granted. And so with that being said, we want to encourage you to continue to give there's a link in the description box below 
a push pay link you can give Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover. And for those who have your smart devices, you can go online and download the push pay app and give online. And we just want to you to know that coming up here in 20, uh, the end of 2020 and into 2021, we've got some great things on the horizon and we will be uh, prizing you of those things. And um, again, it's exciting times. It's really exciting times and it's moving quickly because Jesus is coming back quickly. And so with that being said, I'm gonna bring my wife up and let her uh, share with the children. And would you guys just do me a big favor, uh, put your hands together and love on Lady Esther. Come on, make some noise. Don't, don't she just look good this morning? Okay, that's just me. That's just me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to let her have it right now. <clears throat> I just want to stay up with, with her because she's just, she just looking so good this morning. I just want, can I just hang out right <laughs> <Just, laughs> So today, Pastor was talking, thank you. Today, Pastor was talking about I am and who God is, who Jesus is. And so I was just looking at somebody else was wanting to know who Jesus was, but just didn't really quite know. And so he did the smart thing. He went to Jesus to go find out. A lot of times we go to other people to find out about people and that becomes gossip. And we don't really get to know that person. We just know about them. We know about the president, we know about the governor, we know about the mayor, we know, we know about people, but we don't really know them. We really don't know them. And so this man said, you know what? I wanna know who he is. I'm gonna go talk to him. His name was Nicodemus. This man's name was Nicodemus. And he was a Pharisee. And pastor was talking about the Pharisees. He said, you know, the Pharisees, they just, they just didn't wanna listen. They were just too smart for their own good. And so this man has all the same learning. So it doesn't mean you can't be smart and it doesn't mean you can't be educated, but that can't be the end of it. He said, I know a lot, but I need to know something else because I've got some questions. So he came to Jesus at night because most of his friends wouldn't think very highly of him going to talk to Jesus. So he came at night and said, teacher, we know that you're a teacher who came from God because no one can do the miracles that you do unless they came from God and God was, was with him. Like that's the only way this is gonna happen. So then Jesus looked back at him and said, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Nobody can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Nicodemus didn't say anything about any of that at all. Nicodemus was saying, so let me tell you who I think you are. Jesus is like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna let you know where you are. And that's what Jesus does. He lets us know, not just, hey, this is who I am, this is how I feel, this is what I'm thinking, but hey, this is who you are. This is what I think about where you're at. That's relationship though. That's not I'm being mean. Parents get to know their children, children get to know their parents, we get to know our friends, and we do that by talking to each other. And so Nicodemus, he's scratching his head. He said, well, I wasn't quite going there yet, but okay. He, I got a question anyway. What do you mean be born again? Now, my daughter and my son both seem to think that going back in my stomach would be a good idea. I don't think so. I don't. I, I don't think that's a good plan at all. So I tell them, no, they don't get that option. So what was Jesus talking about? And Nicodemus scratched his head like, I ain't gonna fit anymore. I'm too big. That's not gonna work. What are you talking about, Jesus, being born again? Jesus said, well, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and of the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh and the spirit gives birth to spirit. So think about it. Dogs give birth to puppies and they grow up to be more dogs. Cats give birth to kittens and they grow up to be more cats. Apples make apples, pears make pears, watermelon makes watermelon. That's just what happens. And we don't question that. We just know that that's how life works. And Jesus is saying, you see this all the time. So spirit is going to give birth to spirit. Well, what's spirit? 
Nicodemus is still scratching his head. So Jesus tries to help him understand. He said, the wind blows wherever it wants to go. We all see the wind. It comes past us. We feel it on our faces. We know it's there. We can see it. We don't even have to be outside. We can look out the window. We'll see it blowing the trees. We'll see it blowing the leaves. And sometimes if it's really strong, it'll blow the water in the puddles. We say, oh, look, there's the wind. But we didn't actually see the wind. We just saw what it did. And our bodies are the same way. We can see with our eyes what the Spirit does, even though we can't really see it. So you hear the sound of the Spirit, but you can't really tell where it's coming from or where it's going. And so he said, the only way you're really going to get it is if you're born of the Spirit, because then you'll be Spirit and then you'll get it. But right now, all you have is just a body. And so your body can tell that there's something different about me, but you don't really understand me yet. And I was listening to a song the other day, and it said, on a hill you created, the light of the world suffered in darkness and died. Sometimes in our problems, we forget that God's letting us feel how he feels. He went through some stuff too. And if we're going to be like him, the only possible way to be actually like him is to go through something. Because he did. He went through loss. He went through rejection. Satan rejected him, tried to take his spot. People reject him all the time, try to take his spot, ignore him, talk about him. Everything that we go through, he's been through it too. So he said, you know what? I got you. I just want you to be more like me. Be in the spirit just like me. Thank you all. All right, that was awesome. My wife's an awesome teacher, isn't she? She's just... <laughs> you guys didn't see it, but she was really getting into it. So she's not as demonstrative as I am. <laughs> Y'all too tight today. Just laugh, loosen up a little bit. All right, so let me pray for you. We're going to go home. And then um, I want to ask uh, Pastor Wayne if he'd come up and just bless us going home. But before you do, I'm going to ask Lori and, and Mike to come up and just say a few words just to say a few words, and then I'm going to pa pass it and let uh, Pastor Mike, or excuse me, Pastor Wayne, uh, bless us on the benediction. Okay. But Mike and Lori, come and just say a little something to the people and bless them. Amen. Let them know what you're, what you're doing, too. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good morning. You know, uh, a little while back, we came here and uh, shared some messages and we could feel the spirit of, of God moving in this place, in the community here. We know God wants to touch this area and we've been drawn here. So we are, the spirit wants to do something amazing and we want to be a part of it with you guys. And so, we're coming in uh we want to we want to get to know you guys feel what god is doing in in your hearts and join in the battle with what the lord is doing in this community to take this community back to god and we're all in so anyway we love you guys we we thank you i'm we could feel the spirit move i can i'm still crying the Spirit of God is moving, and I am so overjoyed in my heart that God is, God is presence is getting ready in power. He was saying power. That's what I, that's what I'm searching is the power of God to move through little me, through little Lori, through you guys to touch the community. We we're just out in the community yesterday. We led a young lady to the Lord yesterday. I was. I was kept watching the door waiting for her. But God is getting ready to do it, and we're going to be a part of it. So bless you guys and get to know us a little bit. 
Thank you. Thank you. You know, we moved here about 13 years ago. And um, since that day, I think we, we, we have went to church as a family. We have two daughters. We have a son-in-law. We have uh, uh, 11 grandbabies. We went to church. We've been to church as a family. But when we came here, there are not very many places that will tell you the truth about hell. And the pastor really cares about his people, right? And he don't want anybody going to hell. And we were so drawn to that. So a couple weeks ago, we sat down with our children and we explained to them, they're adults. We, we, we believe God is moving us. It was a hard, hard conversation, you know? But I, I have to tell you, no matter what, you have to do what God is telling you to do. And the Lord invited us here, Mike and Winston, they went and talked and, and it was like, we're home, you know, we're home. And uh, I, um, I, I lead a group called the uh, uh, Kansas City Evangelist Fellowship and Operation Save Kansas City. And so Winston is very, Pastor Winston is very excited about Ruskin Heights being welcome here, about the neighborhood right across the street, just north of us, east of us, west of us, south of us. He said, go get them and bring them in. So yesterday, there were 13 of us. We went out, we knocked on the doors. We prayed, we, we talked to 26 people. 24 of them let us pray. And that's really important because when you pray for somebody, not only is the presence of God with you, but now they let you give the presence of God to them. And as Mike said, one young woman, you know, want to pray for her, Lakeisha. Lakeisha is 20 years old. She had plans in her life. And, uh, you know, she got involved with a, with a young man who left her. And he left her with a baby. And she's like, I don't know what to do, but I need God. And those are the people. And you know what? God has highlighted this church because we are a group. We're a family. We're going to love the lost right into the kingdom. So we're so excited. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Winston. Thank you. Love you. All right. Love you guys. All right. All right. Pastor uh, Wayne, would you come on up and, and close us out and share with the people just a quick word of encouragement. So glad to have you, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you. What a pleasure it's been to be able to worship the Lord. You know, worship is all about connecting with the Lord. And uh, you all know how to do it well. So keep that up. Um, the benediction I'm going to offer to you is not my benediction, but it is God's benediction. You know, when you see somebody and you see them smiling at you, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? A smile, something as simple as a smile. In the Old Testament, it says that may God's face shine upon you. Isn't that a simple thing? But boy, does it make me feel good. Would you stand, please, for the benediction? Lord God, we love you today. We love everything about you. And Lord, we sense today as we have been worshiping you that your face has been shining upon us. And it's been smiling upon us, and it makes us feel great. And so as we leave this place, Lord, we're not just leaving, uh, saying amen and goodbye, and then closing the doors and locking them up. We are leaving with your spirit and with your power, and you will continue to shine your face upon each one of us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the ministry of Blue Hills. Thank you for having me with you. God, would you continue to pour out your love on this wonderful family and this body of believers. In Christ we pray. Amen.